Hey, hey, Flipped Geometry, how you doing? We're jumping into Chapter 9, Section 3, the surface area of pyramids and cones today. So it's a little bit harder than, um, than prisms and cylinders, but uh, just, just fractionally. So put your thinking caps on, take a deep breath, and let's jump into it. All right, we're going to jump into this slide here. So take a look at what you're, you're seeing here. You've got a square pyramid, and then they've given you the net for the square pyramid. And there's some terms uh, that we want to define, and uh, rather than having you write it down, I think this is a better way of, of looking at it and understanding what these are. In a square pyramid, in any kind of pyramid, doesn't matter what kind of shape the, the base is, the segment that goes from the vertex of the pyramid, the top of the pyramid, the apex of the pyramid, straight down to the base and strikes the base at a 90 degree angle. That's the important part because in a little bit you'll see slanty pyramids where it doesn't go from the point uh, through the middle anymore. The important thing is it comes down and it strikes the base at a 90 degree angle. So um, that segment that hits the base at a 90 degree angle, it's perpendicular to the base, is called the height. The length of that um, the length of that is going to be important when we calculate the surface area of this prism. Okay, so that's the height. Now, what would you call this line that follows along uh, the union of two lateral lateral faces? Well, that's the lateral edge. Okay, that's an edge line. Well, that doesn't really matter at all when we're talking about the surface area. And you can see why when you make this thing a net, these four triangles, you don't need the the length of the edge of the triangle, you need the altitude of the triangle, the height of the triangle. So the altitude of these triangles, when you go to calculate their area, the altitude of these triangles is used, uh, we use the letter L for slant length, usually a cursive L. Um, and so the this line here is the altitude of the triangle that is the lateral face of this pyramid. When you make the net, it's the altitude of these. It's called the slant length because when the pyramid is folded up and it is itself, it's not vertical. It's not up and down. It is slanted along the side of the, uh, the lateral face here. Okay, So height, perpendicular to the base, slant length, uh, is the altitude of the triangle that is the face. Okay, So the surface area of a square pyramid is the, the lateral area, these four, in this case four, sometimes it's five, sometimes it's 27 triangles, um, plus the base. Okay, um, So let's do this example here. Find the surface area of this regular pyramid. Here I have an apothem on this, pen, this pentagram, pe pentagon, Christian school. The uh, the apothem of this pentagon is 4.8. The side length of the pentagon is 7. So I can use my 1 half AP and find out the uh, area of that pentagon. And now the um, bottom edge of this triangle is 7 because it's a regular pentagon. And the slant length is 16. So that's the height of that triangle. So the 1 half BH, 1 half base times height, 1 half 7 times 16 will give me one of these triangles, but I've got seven of them. So it's 7 halves of 16 times 7. Um, and then, sorry, 5. 5 of them. 5 halves of 16 times 7. And then plus the area of this. Pause the video for a second see if you can scratch this out on your own and see if our answers agree. All right, let's jump into it. So one half of the base times height, that's the area of the triangle. One half times seven, that's the base times 16 is the height, there, that's 56 inches. Keep in mind there are five of these, okay? And the lateral area is five times those 56, right? So that's 280 square inches. That's all the lateral surface area of this cone. But I have a base, which is one half AP. 1 half times 4.8 times 5 sevens, right, 35 is the perimeter. Um, so 1 half times 4.8 times 35 equals 84 square inches. So 84 on the bottom, 280 on the sides, add them together, and you get 
364 square inches. Is that the same answer you got? If not, it's okay, no sweat. We'll do a bunch of them together in class. Let's move along. So here's some cool derivations for you. If you take what we just did, the 1 half times base times height times the number of sides plus the 1 half AP times, uh, you know, added, adding those together, um, you, can, you can rearrange the formula with some algebra that they don't show you here to get some unique formulas that will help you out. So the lateral surface area of a regular pyramid is 1 half times the perimeter times the slant length. And you can think about that if you were to take that net of triangles and consider them all as one triangle. Um, the, the slant height is what it is, and then the perimeter is the sum of all of their bases. And so um, if you say 1 half times the perimeter times the slant height, that's the total lateral area of a, pier of a regular pyramid. Now, we have to add the base into that, which is 1 half times AP. Now, perimeters in both of those. So we can take the 1 half out, and we can take the perimeter out, and now we can just add the apothem and the slant height, and we can do it all in one fell swoop. So um, lateral area, I'm sorry, the total surface area, it shouldn't say L there. Ooh, it should say S. Total surface area, that's a typo. S equals 1 half the, the perimeter times the sum of the slant heights and the apothem. Kind of a neat derivation that'll come in handy for you later on in the classwork. If you just wrote those two formulas down from the last slide, you can just put in the notes um, in the margin there that that is in fact theorem 9.3.1, or if you didn't, here's theorem 9.3.1. The lateral surface area of a regular pyramid is L equals 1 half perimeter times slant length. Its surface area is S equals, they fixed it on this slide, one half the perimeter times the sum of the lateral, sorry, the slant height and the apothem. Okay, there you go. Where P is the perimeter, L is the slant height, and A is the apothem of the base. So uh, if you have those two things, it'll be a lot happier for you. And actually, I don't think they put this in the third edition of the book. I don't remember those derivations. That's really, really handy, and it'll help you out as we move forward. Okay, so here we have a regular hexagonal pyramid. Um, it has a 12 inch uh, side length and has a 23 inch slant height and they want to know the lateral surface area and the surface area. Now interestingly they did not give you the apothem. So you're gonna have to look at that hexagon and you're gonna have to break it out and consider uh, what the apothem would be. Remember for a regular hexagon, and this is something that you can put in your, in your toolbox and use for a long time, in a regular hexagon, the radius is equal to a side length. It's kind of handy. So um, we have a 12 inch side length, we're gonna have a 12 inch radius, but that's not the apothem, that's the radius. So now if you divide that equilateral triangle with a 12 inch side into two 30, 60, 90 triangles, We've got a 12 inch hypotenuse and a six inch short leg. The long leg is gonna be radical three times the short leg, right? Right. So this is six, this is six radical three. My apothem is six radical three. Um, and if you don't follow that, I'm sure they'll, they'll break it out here in a moment. So um, the perimeter is the number of sides times the side length, six times 12 is 72. The lateral area is 1 half times the perimeter times the slant height, 1 half times 72 times 23. Um, and so that is, that's going to give us our lateral surface area of 828 square inches. But now here they are showing you, they gave you 12 and that means that the, the radius is also 12. The um, half of this is 6, so the apothem is 6 radical 3 because this is a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. Okay, so now I can say the, the perimeter is 72, the lateral area is 828, the apothem is 6 radical 3, put in the whole thing, the surface area is 1 half times the perimeter times the sum of the slant height and the apothem, 1 half times 72 times the sum of 23 and 6 radical 3. Can't really simplify this unless I go to a decimal, um, but I can combine these and distribute that into that and then distribute that times that and I get this, and if I want to uh, simplify down into a decimal, I've got to use my calculator, and uh, 100, 
828 plus 216 times the radical 3 is 1,202.1 square inches. This would be an acceptable um, simplified binomial. That's fine. Or you can go to this as the decimal. Okay? Let me know if you have any questions about that. You don't have to write this slide down. Just look at it. And it helps you think about why perimeter and um, lateral surface area for pyramids leads so nicely into cones. Um, as the number of sides of the base of a regular pyramid increases, the pyramid approaches the shape of a cone. If you have a pyramid with, with four sides, it doesn't look very cony. But if you, have a, if you have a pyramid with 40 sides or 400 sides or 4,000 sides, now it's basically round, right? Um, and so a pyramid approaches the shape of the cone. The base, is, uh, the base approaches the shape of a circle. Um, and the apothem approaches the radius of a circle. So the same logic for a pyramid um, with a large number of sides it works for a cone. So a lot of the same math we're going to use here. Take a look at the, um, the two formulas next to each other. For a regular pyramid, the surface area is one half times the perimeter times the sum of the slant height and the apothem. Here, the surface area is one half times the sum, sorry, one half times the circumference, same thing as a perimeter, right? Times the sum of the lateral area and the radius, which is stands in places of the apothem. So um, when you compare these equations, um, one half times CL instead of one half times PL, and one half times C times the sum of L and R, um, you see that this is the same logic. Okay, pyramids and cones uh, can do each other's math. Now let's give you a theorem with these things in it. So the lateral surface area of a circular cone is one half times CL, and the surface area is one half times C times the sum of L and R. Um, C now is circumference, so you gotta think circumference two pi R, okay? That's gotta go in there. And actually, if you wanted to simplify this a little bit more, um, you, you have R outside, and you have two and one half, you've got R inside, you could probably play with some algebra with this and come up with an even better simplified equation. But the point of them showing you this one is to let you know that it's the same math as the pyramid. Okay. Here they're making you go backwards to this equation. They've given you a cone, they've told you the radius, they've told you the total surface area, and they have not told you the height. So you're just going to go backwards to the equation. Okay. It's just algebra. It's not challenging. The surface area is one half times the circumference times the sun, sum of the slant height and the radius. Um, so using this and plugging in S, and you can get C because you have the radius, you can solve for L, and then that's going to be the slant height. Now you've got a, a triangle that has uh, a base of 6, and then this other leg is what we're looking for given the, hypoth the hypotenuse. Let's look how they do it. 144 pi equals 1 half times 144 pi, they didn't say pi, another typo, good times, 144 pi equals 1 half times the circumference, 2 pi r, times the sum of L and 6. So you can simplify all these numbers, right? And you can get 6 times L plus 6. Well, that's 6L, and look at that, the pi went away. I think that was a Oh, uh, no, there it is. That should have been a pi, because then they divided both sides by pi to get rid of that. Okay, 24 equals L plus 6, okay, and then L is 18. So the slant height is 18. My base is 6. Now I can use Pythagorean's theorem. 6 squared plus H squared equals 18 squared, okay? Um, so I'm going to solve Pythagorean's theorem for H. H equals the square root of 288. Um, or 12 radical 2, or if you wanted to go to a decimal, uh, that's 17, approximately 17. Okay, so that is another way that you can use this. Here's just one more presentation of all of these formulas, and then they did, um, in this slide, they did go further in the derivation of, um, of the math with regard to a circular cone. So if you look here, um, the 1 half CL um, and the, the 1 half C times L plus R, here they are, um, they're letting you realize that circumference is 2 pi R, 1 half times 2 that cancels out. 
Um, and so pi times r times l will give you the lateral area. And then if you want to simplify this, again, c is 2 pi r. The 2 and the 1 half cancel out. And now you can distribute the pi and the r times both of these if you wanted to and have pi r l, which you just had here, right? That's the lateral area anyway, plus pi r squared, that's the base. So this actually doesn't do a whole heck of a lot for you. Um, anyway, uh, if you want to use this formula or this formula, they'll all get you the right answer. Hey, welcome back. My shirt just changed and the lighting is different. What happened? Oh, this is what happens when you start a video one day and finish it the next. Anyway, uh, we're going to be introducing you to the idea of regular polyhedra. Um, these are these are five regular polyhedra. It says the five regular polyhedra as if these are the only five regular polyhedra. There are more, um, but we are uh, we're not going to teach you all of them. So I guess these are the five that you need to know. So tetrahedron, four sides, um, is a group of of four triangles. And um, if you if you ever use a four sided die in a game. That's the shape that this is. It's also a triangular pyramid would be another way of looking at that. A regular hexahedron is like a six-sided die or a sugar cube. Um, and then a regular octahedron. This is a, a less common shape. If you take two square pyramids and stack them so that their square bases are touching, then that's what we have here. Okay. And then a regular dodecahedron. This looks something like a soccer ball, although this isn't, but this that's what this has always looked like to me. Dodecahedron, um, this has 12 sides. Dodeca, deca means 12, and when you put a do in front of it, it makes it 12. Uh, and then an isocahedron, isoca. I, I don't know why that's so fun to say. Isocahedron. Anyway, that's uh, <laughs> that has 20 sides. All right, so these are the regular polyhedra that you will do a little work with in this chapter. So to find the area, the surface area of a regular polyhedra, you just need to know the surface area of one of its faces and then multiply that by the number of faces that the, that the polyhedra has. So Blake, he's an entrepreneur. He's a go-getter. Uh, he sells calendars in the shape of a regular dodecahedron. So it's a 12-sided polyhedra, and you can, I guess, roll it around to the right month. Uh, find the total surface area of the calendar if each face has an edge of 1.8 inches and an apothem of 1.1. So um, 12 sides, so that's the 12, right? And the area of a, of a regular polygon is 1 half AP. So 1 half A, the apothem is 1.1, and P, there are, uh, we could go back, but a, um, well, let's go back. So a regular, oh, there you go. Dodecahedron is made up of penta pentagons. So pentagons have five sides. Each one of them in this example has a length of 1.8. Okay. Da -ba -da -ba -da. So 1.8 times 5 um, is going to be 6 times the apothem, the, the 12 times 1 half is 6, times the apothem of 1.1, times 5 times the edge, um, which is 1.8. And then you could combine this again to be 30 times the apothem times the edge. So let's just do that now. 30 times the apothem times the edge is 59.4 square inches. Okay? That would be the total surface area of the 12-sided soccer ballish calendar. I've never seen one, but I think it's a cool idea. And that's it. So if you have any questions, please put them in the comments field below, and I'll get to it as quickly as I can. Or you can see me in class tomorrow, and we'll go through it then. Until then, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Good night.